After a week of rumors, speculation, and meltdowns online, Phil Spencer, Sarah Bond, Matt Booty finally came out and addressed the Xbox Nation. And we're going to go over what they had to say in regard to games, hardware, and where the future of Xbox is going here next on Pushing Polygons. First, I think it's important that we talk about the hardware side of things where Sarah Bond came out and spoke about hardware that was coming this holiday, 2024, and next gen, but I'm going to let you hear it in her own words. And we got more to come. There's some exciting stuff coming out in hardware that we're going to share this holiday. And we're also invested in the next generation roadmap. And what we're really focused on there is delivering the largest technical leap you will have ever seen in a hardware generation, which makes it better for players and better for creators and the visions that they're building. Now, the question being is, did Sarah Bond misspeak? And is it something that they're going to announce later in 2024? Or are they going to announce it in June? And also the big question is, is it going to be the rumored Series X refresh that we heard about? Or is it going to be something else? But we will speculate that about that a little bit more later in the video. I think it's important to note, though, that Xbox is committing at this point to doing a next generation console. So regardless of whether or not they are bringing games to other platforms, whether it is the initial four that we are going to talk about here in just a moment, or they're bringing a lot more. Well, you know, that's still up in the air. And at least for now, hardware is still on the move at Redmond and they are going to continue their commitment to the Xbox nation. Moving on to the hardware piece, Phil Spencer said that they were only bringing four titles to the uh, to other platforms at this time. So we made the decision that we're going to take four games to the other consoles, um, just four games, not a change to our kind of fundamental exclusive strategy. Um, it is we're making these decisions for some specific reasons. Um, we make every decision really with the long term health of Xbox in mind. Um, and long-term health of Xbox means a growing platform, our games performing, building the best platform for creators, um, reaching as many players as we can. We're always looking to learn as a leadership team. Um, he did not commit to naming those titles, but he said at this time that there is going to be four. Now, I think in this particular case, although Phil Spencer didn't name them, I think that some of the rumors that have been circulating out there are pretty much confirmed to be true. And that's going to be your hi-fi rushes, your grounded, your sea of these things that are more, you know, that are, that are smaller titles that have been on the platform for a period of time and that are service. So these make excellent choices to go to other platforms because they are also not core to the identity of your console. And I talked about the identity of the console in the video, Xbox going third party. You can find a link to that up in the corner. And I think this is the smart move for them to get a taste of what moving games are, are like going to other platforms to see if the sales are there and to see if it makes a lot of sense to them. Now, when it comes to these games, they are open-ended. You know, the sales will help drive further support for more content, whether it's Sea of Thieves content, whether it is grounded content. Hi-Fi Rush is kind of a one and done game, but if that sells well over on the PlayStation platform or the Switch platform, that is gonna give an indication to Microsoft of whether or not something like Starfield or Indiana Jones could do well over there. Now, I think it is important to point out that Phil Spencer outright said in the interview that at this time, Starfield and Indiana Jones are not coming to PlayStation. It's not happening. So these four titles, what are they? Can they? Can you say? 
I'm not going to name those games. The teams that are building those games have announced plans that are not too far away. As we know, game teams put a lot of energy into their announcements with the partners. So um, I don't want to take anything away from those teams. Um, so I won't be talking about the titles specifically, but I, I think when they come out, um, it'll make sense. Can we say if either of those titles are Starfield or Indiana Jones? They are not Starfield or Indiana Jones. Well, ever when we get to speculations, we're going to talk about whether or not they could still come to the platform. So stick around for that here in just a moment. Now let's get into some speculation. Either prior to the recording of the business update podcast or after they recorded and before they released it, The Verge did an interview with Phil Spencer where Spencer goes to talk about games and whether or not that they would come to other platforms. And, you know, although right now he is saying that Indiana Jones and Starfield are not coming to the PS5, I think it is very important to actually read between some of the lines he's talking about. So the questions were asked in regard to... Satya Nadella's compensation at the executive level, or maybe it's Phil's compensation, and how that is reflected. Uh, it's gone from Game Pass subscriptions to um, creations and services. And Phil comments that th- that the compensation, and he has to be very careful about this because this information um, is also publicly relevant in regards to a uh, tradable company on how their executives are getting paid. So he states that they switched from Game Pass to revenue generated by um, content and services, and it includes content and services that are going across the other consoles. So whatever money is made across these consoles... I mean, the success of that is also important. The And because this is a growth strategy to continue funding content and to continue funding games, the success of these games on PlayStation and on Switch is very important uh, to Microsoft. So to say that they're only going to do four uh, at this time... Um, you know, it's a it's a slow drip. It's a it's it's definitely turning up the heat slowly because I don't think Microsoft wants a complete meltdown of the fan base on Xbox uh, as it's deemed at this time. And and the reason for that is even if Microsoft is going to bring more games to PlayStation, it's going to take them time to bring more games to PlayStation. And to do that, you need to continue to support the hardware base that you have now. Again, this isn't saying that all games are going to PlayStation, but if history, if, you know, the past is prologue, if the past is prologue, then you can look back at a um, Gamers N interview that Phil Spencer did back in 2016, where he said not all games were coming to PCs. What do you want to say to the folks who, in light of the Quantum Break thing coming to PC, that say, oh, there there's, there's no reason to buy an Xbox One anymore if all this stuff's coming to PC? Do you, see, my argument was, do, do you even care? As long as you're, people are playing in the Microsoft ecosystem, Yeah, I matter. heard you guys say that. We absolutely care. Like, there's, when somebody makes an investment in Xbox One and they make that center of their console gaming experience, We have a commitment to make those people feel great about their investment in their console and continue to feel great about it. And so absolutely I care. I understand when you guys were answering, it was kind of from a financial standpoint, we get your money either way. I think it was your term. I wouldn't say we get your money. (laughs) But the uh, we we actually think there's kind of a fundamental difference between a gaming experience on a PC and a gaming experience on a television. And there are certain either people or time that you decide I want to play in front of my television. I want Xbox One to be absolutely the best console gaming experience we can create. And we're committed to that today, and we'll be committed to that for many years. We're also Microsoft. We also look at Windows, obviously, something that's critical to the success of the company. And frankly, as us, the gaming group, we look at Windows, and we think we can actually have an impact there on making that 
um, a positive impact on Windows as uh, Windows 10 as a gaming platform. The the you know the argument that people give me that hey I'm just going to sell my Xbox One and play all these games on my PC, you know I, I get the emotion around that argument. Frankly, from a financial standpoint, absolutely the most cost-effective way to go play these games is to own an Xbox yeah, One. $300 box. Yeah, I mean the graphics card alone is probably 2x what the yeah. Xbox uh, to run at a similar resolution. But we also know that people love gaming rigs and they've got them set up. So I look at that customer and absolutely I want to bring Xbox Live. We're committed to bringing our biggest franchises, both Xbox and Windows. We've said that. Um, doesn't mean necessarily that every game ends up on both platforms because there could be some differences in just the play space and how things play. But you know, we look at those Windows ecosystems, what it's going to mean for my console, our console customers, more games to play. We're already seeing that. We're seeing more developers focusing on Xbox as the ecosystem gets bigger. So more people that they can sell their games to and can play means more people playing, more games to, uh, under development. I think those are just those are really strong things for the Xbox One community. Are you surprised at all at the the uh, sort of uproar with the Quantum Break stuff last week? No, I I, I expect it's kind of too too much of a word. But uh, I mean, you know this. I'm online most nights playing on my Xbox. People jump on and they'll talk to me about, yeah, you better keep this exclusive. You better <laughs> keep that exclusive. Keep uh, you know only on Xbox. Like the and, and I understand the passion around it, but what I want to, you know, and I've said this, I've said it to you, I've said it to other people in the industry and, and in the press, I'm really focused on what people can play, yeah. not focused on what people can't play. I don't really think about that as a great way of growing our industry. Uh, I want to make sure that when people choose to play on our platforms, they have the broadest set of games to go play. I've said that in terms of like deals that we'll do for content. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of 30 day exclusive windows. I find that stuff kind of divisive in how our industry should be growing. And obviously we're gonna create first party games. We create first party games to prove our ecosystem, prove our platform and service. Um, but so, I don't know, expected is too high of a word, but I know there's a lot of passion around Xbox. I think the fundamental concern that people have is are we losing focus on the console? Is Microsoft somehow gonna back away from our console focus and just have us only focus on, on Windows? And absolutely not true. We are more committed to our console uh, and the future of that console than we've ever been. So again, is um, is Phil lying? I, I mean, is it a lie? I mean, let's look at it this way. It's a truth at the time that it's told. So circumstances change and things will evolve, but to say that Starfield and Indiana Jones would never show up on PlayStation, well, Phil Spencer addresses that with The Verge as well, and he says that in the industry, we can never rule it out. And so what they're saying here is, although we haven't made that decision at this time, we aren't going to say that it's not coming because we don't know. It depends on how these other games do. So could Microsoft still continue to make the journey toward the third party publisher? Yeah, they, they absolutely could. And as I said, again, in the video I referenced earlier that in many respects, they already are a third party party publisher, especially with Activision Blizzard in their fold. The thing is, is that Microsoft themselves haven't gone through the motions as of yet. I mean, they did with one game. It was Ori on the Nintendo Switch. But in regard to Call of Duty, they haven't done those motions yet. They're about to go through those motions this upcoming year. So then we can truly call them a third-party publisher in that regard with larger um, more financially substantial games. And I also think that will give a good read on how their games will do on PlayStation as well, because now everybody is aware that Microsoft has consumed Activision Blizzard. And for the most part, the casual audience and for the hardcore gamers out there, you have to keep this in mind for the casual audience they don't care about that. That's not a big deal to them. It's Call of Duty. They love playing Call of Duty just like they love playing Madden, just like they like playing Fortnite. This doesn't matter to them. It's not a big deal. They're going to continue to buy these games. And th unfortunately, these 1% of games are what make 90% of the revenue in the industry. So, and then let's 
take a moment and let's uh, speculate about hardware for a moment. Hardware is going to be interesting. Now, we all know with the FTC leaks and Phil Spencer said in his interview with The Verge that, you know, he had no comment. He wasn't going to say anything. Is it a handheld that's coming this holiday? I don't think so. That's too soon. Um, I do think that would be definitely more of a next gen approach. The question really is, is it a, is it Brooklyn? Is it the next gen? Is it not next gen? Is it a pro model or is it just a refresh of the current series X that we saw in the FTC leak? The one without a disc drive that looked like a, a trash can. I think that is going to be the most interesting part. So a lot, there was been a lot of speculation, a lot of talk about Microsoft not signing chip agreements with AMD. So it's possible that they had continued on with a pro. And if they did continue on with a pro, we don't see a next gen Xbox until probably 2028. If they did not continue on, and this is just the, FTC circular trash can console, then we possibly see a next gen Xbox in 2026. You know, the leakers have reported things uh, various ways saying that an Xbox Series X Pro uh, was out, but we've seen how wrong the leakers have been recently. So I would still actually put a Series X Pro on the table. I wouldn't completely write that one off just yet. Literally because the leakers have been wrong. And it would prolong uh, the Series X by a couple of years. Now, coming out earlier than the PlayStation 6, of course, would be to Microsoft's advantage, as we've seen during the 360 generation, as long as they keep their foot on the gas for great games, they could win a generation. They almost won the 360 generation, at least as far as the zeitgeist is concerned. They did win the series, or excuse me, the 360 generation because they had most of the talk. The only reason they lost that generation is because they took their eye off the ball and they only lost that generation sales wise by like 1.52 million units it's not a big gap when it comes to that and as far as i'm concerned the zeitgeist throughout most of when that generation was relevant they won it hands down now that's not to say that they couldn't do that again that's not to say that the company isn't relevant that's not to say that they don't have the components necessary to get the job done but they need the drive, they need the plan, they need the timing to get it all done. These are pieces that they have to work very hard on. And if they are going to continue on that path, they are going to continue with this plan, they have to be very well organized, which is something that we have not seen the Xbox brand do very well in the last several years. So the conversation this afternoon with Matt Booty and all them was very interesting as a whole it was corporate speak like we got a little bit out of it but we didn't get a lot out of it I mean you know they talked about Diablo 4 coming to Game Pass great I mean I think that's a non-starter anybody who really wanted to play that game I think had already bought that game maybe it'll get traction in Game Pass well we will wait and see on that one but otherwise, it was a lot of um, it was a lot of corporate vagueness where they gave you an idea of where they were going, but they definitely didn't give you specifics. Guys, are you excited? Do you think this was a big W for Xbox? Do you think it was an L for PlayStation? Whatever these games are, whether or not the speculation of the four is correct, are you going to buy them on PlayStation? Have you already played them on Xbox? Again, this isn't about uh, this isn't about Xbox and PlayStation, at least not on this channel. For all of you, like as far as I'm concerned, because there are some channels out there that talk about how uh, you know the, 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 uh, you got to hold the line and you know kingdoms. Well, you know what? The kingdom, everybody, the kingdom is gaming, and Xbox and Playstations 
are just fiefdoms in the kingdom of gaming. I say it's time we focus on what really matters, the games. Who's with me? See, I love gaming, okay? I love you too. I love walk-off homers and headshots. I love drifting a turn at 100 miles an hour in boss battles with a 600-foot-tall Greek god who may or may not be your father. <laughs> Gaming is having a ridiculously huge TV in a tiny one-room apartment. Staying up till 3 a.m. to earn a trophy that isn't real. Yeah. But is. Yeah. And it's girls who know that the way to a man's heart is through a melee attack. Yeah. I love gaming. And I know you love it too. That's why you're here and why millions of people are pretending to work while they watch this at their desk. Because every gamer is a true gamer. Motion gamers, sitting gamers, everyone. And though we may pledge fanboy allegiances to different flags, deep down inside we all serve one master, one king, and his name is gaming. Forever may he reign! So whichever fiefdom that you believe in, what do you think of today's announcement? If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. I want to thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next video.